TM. You know what? If we're lucky, we might be finished in time for the football later on. So um, now, in the first game, I often do terrible. So I, I want to have a nice, crisp, clean first first round win here. It is a monster field, isn't it, Harry Chess? I'm just adjusting my mic. So if you've been watching my streams, you will know that um, I've been punting the wing gambit quite a lot. I've been having a lot of fun with this opening. This opening has really, really been, I've really enjoyed playing it. It's one of my most fun openings at the moment. I think with any opening, you've got to persist with like 50, 100 games before you get used to the ideas. So, um, we'll see where he puts his knight. Uh, probably e7 is normal, but he's, he can move it anywhere he wants to. Um, now here, this is my little pet move, and this is some sexy shit. This is, this is sexy. I love this move. I love this move. One of my favorite moves in chess. Um, and I haven't even had any beer yet. I'm having my first sip. You would have thought I've had 10 points of a move like that, right? But the idea is if he takes it, I take with the bishop and he can't castle. So we fire across his king. Fire your guns. Okay, so we're going to get this. So we're going we're gonna to put this one in here. Hello Ken, hope you're doing alright. And everyone in the chat, I started the stream a bit late today, so if I if I didn't get a chance to say hello to you all, there we go. I don't know why, we can get rid of that opera stuff now as well. Uh, okay, so like, I can just put this bishop right in the guts now, right? Thank you Pearlman for, for subscribing, but I think we're going to first bring the queen in. So on the exchange down, I'm glad you've had a couple of wins with the weasel poo, Ken. <laughs> It's quite a fun opening. Will I be playing the weasel poo today? <laughs> so, well, this is a really fun position. Because like I say, the whole point of giving up the exchange is, look at that. That is some bad ass bishop. Uh, so I will probably put this bishop. Okay, can he do that? What if I, he's going to bring his knight back here. Maybe he can just do this. So do I now bring my bishop in? Or do we attack the knight so we threaten the rook? So if I go bishop here, I'm threatening to take the knight, take the rook. And we might as well... We might as well... Play with threats, right? Because we have given up the exchange. So his king can't move. My queen is dangerously placed and I have a threat. I'm not sure how he stops this threat. Uh, which I'm gonna take the knight, take the rook, and I'm actually gonna be serious material up. He can't move here because of my bishop, and I take and I cap capture there. Um, and if he tries some counter attack, it looks like his king should be too weak there, but how, how could that go? I just I just take on h8 and um, I just take on h8 and it's mate. So is is my opponent in a lot of trouble here? So I will capture this one. And I'm simply threatening now to take the rook. If he takes my bishop, I'm just simply a piece up now, uh, which is all right, isn't it? Now I can uh, swap the queens off. I can play this move. Uh, you know what? I can swap the queens off immediately. There's so many moves. I can't play c5. <laughs> Don't do that because of the queen. Um, so many tempting moves. We're a piece up. We don't need to do anything heroic. Uh, I'm not going to let his knight get into the game. Uh, we just play. We just play some normal moves, and the extra piece will win the game here. Uh, let's just get the last pieces out, and. When you're a piece up, you can aim to exchange off pieces. Um, do we push on? Do we capture? I think we can capture here safely, but maybe it gives his pieces some play. Push on. The knight comes in. I think this is all right. And I can just play d4 next. 
and the last piece, I just need to get my rook in. I, I could, I could, okay, he wants to go here check in in some variation if I castle. So I'm even thinking about bringing my bishop over here. I've got h4, there's a lot of good moves here. Um, but when you're a piece up, you don't need to go crazy. So we can just keep it under control. Um, here b6 is a little bit annoying. Okay, I'm gonna try another square. And we'll just take that one off. And now king e2. Playing this really badly actually, because I just missed this one. <laughs> I can't believe how badly I'm playing this position. I mean, this is. I kind of like. I kind of like. One of my mistakes is when I got a one position. Okay, I mean, it obviously it's still quite easy, but when I got a one position, I kind of like lose a bit of my attention, which is a classical mistake, right? You know, when you got a one position, you you, you should never relax in chess until. Your opponent has has resigned. Um, I mean, this is this is pretty easy. I mean, there we go. Okay. Um, so it's probably. I mean, I was winning there after ten moves, so that that was a nice a nice start um, to the game. Um, and again, hello, thank you, Pearl Man, for subscribing, and anyone else who. Well, I can I can sip a beer now, which is the most important thing. Hello Martin, a good start it looks it looks like. Yeah, I mean it's better than my normal start, right? I managed to win a game. Can we see a Dutch? Well you, you might be able to see a Dutch when I got the black pieces, but it's quite hard to play a Dutch or white. Um and well let's have a look. So uh the opening, this is a really interesting opening, and you can get this position, and I know this position. I had this you can play A3 first and you get the same thing. So after here you go B4. And you get the same variation as we got in the game. Uh, one of my favourite little variations is this, and I love this b4 because it means that black has less chances to um, turn down the gambit. It's more forcing. Now, this is all quite natural, and the reason I think the knight should go there because if the knight goes there, um. Rook a3 is, is not the best move now because after here, here, my opponent can castle, right? Because the knight's on a better square. Um, this is the wing gambit. Uh, I, I go into the, the wing gambit in my chessable course Grandmaster Gambits, which might even be on sale. And after knight a6, this rook a3 is, is one of my favourite opening moves in any opening. And the point being, if white doesn't take it, we're going to start hitting the king side because black hasn't got any all the blacks pieces on the other side of the board so we're just going to start attacking that area and if black does take it this is probably a very tricky position for black it was Bronstein who once told me that minor pieces the knights and bishops are stronger than rooks in the opening and I totally agree knights and bishops are stronger than rooks and that bishop is worth a rook <coughs> to Mill saying you hit 50,000 subs on I did hit I hit 50,000 subs on YouTube quite a while back now but I'd love to get more, uh, more stuff going on on YouTube. Let, let let's hope let's hope we can build it up. Uh, I'm glad you like the Killer Dutch book, Roth Hiff. Oh wow! Uh, and I think after the way my opponent played it, well here I, I thought I think my opponent has to play something like G6, but this position looks quite pleasant for me after putting the bishop there. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Hector. That's three subscriptions in a row. Very kind of you. And thank you, Ken. So we've got a hype train. Wah, wah. Uh, okay, and oh my words. Oh my words. We're playing we're playing this geezer. Grizzchuk. Can you add him and eve it? We're playing Grizzchuk. <laughs> oh, well, cheers to that. Let's have a sip of beer and enjoy it. Huh? Okay, we're playing some normal stuff against him. So cheers and let's see what he does um okay uh, 
So there's two lines. There's this line and th and that I play, and there's another line. But I'm going to go for this line. But Chris Tripp plays this as white as well. Now, last time I played him was in a title Tuesday when I was on five out of five, and, and, and he smashed me up. And um, this is quite theoretical. I, I don't know if I can remember the theory in this line. Uh, and this was actually the first time anyone played this in a game. It was Grischuk versus Magnus Carlsen, right? <laughs> so I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, it's quite funny. And this is what I play because I don't know the theory. We're just going to keep it quite simple. And Grischuk got a good position against, this is Grischuk's idea, this one, quite funnily. So we're just going to play some chess here. Now I played Grisha a couple of times before in a bar about 15 years ago when he was giving me time odds. His one minute against my five and we were playing, what should we playing for? We're playing four. Do we go in? I think we go in. We're playing, we're playing for like 100 euros a game or something. It was uh, <laughs> one of those ones. So I don't know, I've, I've had this position before. Now pawn takes might be playable, yeah? And then just take take on d5 i mean i'm going to keep it really simple because i'm scared this is like a scared move right this is like a scared move it's the kind of move you play when you're scared should take the other way clearly and well we can't be too scared can we What's this position like? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's probably even, right? At the moment. It does have double pawns. I'm just keeping it very simple. The reason I keep it simple is because I've lost so many games by in, in by doing trying to do clever stuff, right? And sometimes simple is okay. Now, this is simple, clearly. Simple chess. It's the kind of position where you wish you were Magnus Carlsen as white, because you'd probably be like, yeah, slight, slight pull, slight pull on the pawns, but probably not at all. So what are we doing here? Queen d2. I guess we could just play normal moves. Rook here. B3. Simple chess. Again, he's he's got to outplay me here, or win on time, which is also very likely. I'm not doing any heroics at the moment. Um, it's just nice to play someone like Grischuk, isn't it? What an honour to play someone so strong, right? Um, you don't you don't get a chance to play people like this a lot. Maybe I maybe I'm threatening to play d5 here. I, I don't really I don't really know. The thing is, players like Grischuk probably overthink it. They're probably like, oh yeah, this guy this guy he's got some really clever ideas. I'm not I can't I, I'm not thinking like that at all. I can't I can't even calculate that much. So I'm just like just playing some moves. <laughs> don't I really know what I'm doing. Now, I'd love to go rook c5. Takes 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 queen takes rook here. But I don't know. Uh, necessarily works so well bishop here playable uh rook c3 is a very simple move and bishop okay i'm, I'm spent far too much time don't i it's crazy let's try this Let's try this move. And um, I'm just trying to do this one. Probably have to take here now. So. 
Position is probably right for me, right? Don't know about all these moves around my king. I'm not playing. But I'm trying to say it's a way for me to try and win. This queen is quite. Got to play quick now. Got to play quick. Yes. Quite close game, right? Time for a swig. Pawns look pretty, pretty bloody scary. I have to say. So, this is not so good. Ah. No, no, not good, Simon. Ah, he got me in the end. That was pretty terrible at the end there. That was pretty terrible at the end there. I must be doing all right there. And just should not have gone into the ending there. Ah, oh, so, ah, oh, I think I thought I was doing well at the end, but then his end game play was better. And it was always a bit, it was always, let's have a look. So around here, I'm doing all right. A little bit better here. But he did. The ending was good for him, and he did outplay me. And I think my e4 move, I could just feel it was a bad move, yeah. And, and around here, yeah, maybe I should just play a4. Of course I should, because then if the queens come off, this is a much better move. And the point is, if he ever plays this, I can always capture it, and my a pawn is very strong. So, um, so there. Uh, and I didn't leave myself quite enough time there. After g5. F3 seems all right, but this next move of mine is bad, definitely. Um, taking on C6, probably a draw. I, I thought the ending might have some winning chances, and it's like, with my pawns, it may, maybe it's all right for me, but I, I just, he, he he played very well, obviously, and it's probably not all right for me. So in this position, I also wanted to play this. How bad is this move? Just trying to keep the pieces on and bring the king maybe this is even a better way to play it's about even in the position is that a bearing but this is this has seemed to have gone wrong now definitely a little bit worse because his king is so active and i need to play a better move here uh than what i did so i didn't come up with a good plan and I don't know if this is defensible, but it looks really tough now, right? The computer is saying I can go rook f5. Of course I can. And that's where that's where you need that's where you need a bit of extra time, right? Just to find some move like that, and that should be absolutely fine, right? But this one is now losing, yeah. Uh, I would imagine, yeah, this is losing now. So there's some critical moments there, and uh, well. Uh, obviously he's going to play well quite a simple play and i just kept it very simple in the opening i don't know i don't know if i can take i don't know if i can take this way it felt like i might be able to but after this one i wasn't sure um about how 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 it would go so after bishop takes here this thing this, i've always thought these positions are maybe a little bit better for white with a better pawn structure but maybe just very slightly right and when you're playing someone of Christchurch's class, you get a little bit you get a little bit worried. 
and all these moves seem very natural. Um, playing all good moves. Oh, we're in with another game. So, and I've wasted 45. I hate this when you 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 analyze something and another game starts. But anyway, we lost to Grisha. It's not the end of the world. Let's see if we can bounce back. Let's see if we can bounce back. I'm gonna have to move quick now because I've lost 45 seconds. So, um, now this is an old variation of the Tarash and I, I think I forgot to play Queen B6 there which stops this move and, and the reason you kind of want to stop this move is he, he gets his he gets pretty good development and there's a couple of strategies you can play here as black and the strategy I'm using I actually remember from a Danny King a Danny King Foxy's video course on <laughs> Foxy videos they're like 25 years old and it was on the French and he gave this interesting way of trying to get in knights over here as counterplay but I've never been a massive fan of this because whites play on the king side when he plays g4 it's pretty darn scary so it's an interesting way to play but I I, I kind of prefer to be white here but but, but I mean I think it maybe maybe not maybe because he gets his g4 in but it takes him a couple of moves to do it I've got some holes to come over here um so uh, anyway, nice to play Grishit there, but uh, a couple of bad decisions from me at the end um, lost me the game. Um, but let's put that out, to the, out of mind. Now knight c4 might be playable, and I think I'm gonna play it because if I can get my bishop to this diagonal, it cuts across his g4 move. The only thing I'm worried about is if he captures and plays d5 when I will take it and I'm just wondering if he gets enough counterplay there so he has to play d5 he's probably listening to the stream this is one I get really paranoid when I'm streaming are they because you know if someone knows it's me they they okay he, so he didn't play it so I think d5 would have been a very good positional pawn sack because now now I, now I feel I'm quite happy okay well I, I think I can castle here I, I I don't I don't see why not and he's going for d5 but my light square control is very good. Bishop here, and I've got very nice clamp in the center of the board. And I do have a poor majority on the queen side. My knight is nicely placed. So I've got annoying moves like queen e4. So I think this position is very promising for me. Now, is that pawn going anywhere? I don't feel it. I mean, I could go, I don't, I don't, I'm not worried about Harry at the moment. I can go h6, and I think I, but then his knight comes in here. But then I always go bishop takes knight. We don't allow his knight to come in. I'd love to transfer my knight somewhere a bit more central here. But I think the main idea is just to just to play b4, right? So um, even play for c3 looks natural. So he's trying to get this move in. But c3, I've created a lot of counterplay very quickly here. If my I don't think he has to take this yeah? and he can't he can't play g4 again because of the good position of my pieces now this one it's very tempting okay I'm gonna take it now do I sacrifice here um, I don't think so not yet this one is on my radar okay so he's coming in now I can just go rook c7 one of the rooks to c7 and kick him back. I'm very tempted to take here now. I'm gonna. Oh, okay, I have to do it now if I can do it. Now, does he have a perpetual if I bring my other rook down? I think he might have a perpetual. So if we go rook here. Oh, okay, gotta be. He's gonna bring his knight over here. This is the issue. Taken is at least a draw. Takes takes king moves. I want to go rook c2, but he's got queen takes e6, and I think it's a draw. And we can't we can't have a draw here. Okay, I'm going to do it anyway, but I'm not because I get a lot of pawns. I think I just I clear up all his pawns. I clear I get two pawns, and I can get my queen back to d5, and then I can try to come in. So. This one picks up another pawn with check. See, I wanted to get rook here in, but I was worried about queen e8. So 
we're gonna now we can bring the rook in because he doesn't have a draw because the only reason he had a draw is because he had a pawn here which allowed him to go queen g6 check so by eliminating that pawn we get the win that's a nice game that's more like it so i think that was a good game um Grishchuk game you still get annoyed when you're playing like Grishchuk and you're like oh everything was in control you just do one slip against these guys keep it very simple against Grishchuk and just like just get a bit nervous I think I get very nervous thank you chess chef for the cheer uh, it's always nice any cheers or anything uh, you want to put into the mix it's 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 good of you to do that so hello Oliver Nee Oliver uh, you should get a round of applause Oliver because Oliver was one of the first first people to um to subscribe to this channel which is most appreciated so i think we're solidly getting 94 percent accuracies today which is a good start and we're having it we're having a beer with it we're, we're having a bit of fun as well so let's see what well, i'm not going to talk about what score i'm going to get we're going but we're going to get a bloody big score and you can see here i mean when the computer says he's plus one in this position this you know the computer says he's literally one pawn up here this is just a normal opening position and this plan maybe the computer's not on a high enough thing it's a very well-known plan and like i say maybe i prefer white thank you for the two subscribers uh go england yeah the football's tomorrow very much looking forward to that um but um so here computer thinks he has a good move i wonder what that is bishop e3 so the one point where i think he messed it up was this move and the computer of course gives the best move which is d5 now it still thinks black's better here but this is the kind of position i don't generally like playing i'm just gonna make sure the other game hasn't started because i have to take this pawn and it just feels to me that white has very good compensation here he's got a very nice square here his e pawn is very dangerous and this would be this would be a little bit worrying for me and then the final blow was this um maybe of course i had better moves but rook takes f3 is a good move um and you can see the computer thinks it's winning i do have other moves here which are strong but I, the only thing i was thinking about in this position was i wanted to play rook c2 so i i obviously wanted to play this straight away but as soon as i notice i can win the f pawn the h pawn it, it, it's easily winning but this one is just one to avoid because he has a draw right and he just does the draw like this so just got to avoid avoid that little trick um so there we go um now let's uh see the the tournament scores who's on free is david howe still playing let's have a little look anti-drome is my friend richard perp let's see how he's getting on and this is an easy draw as long as he doesn't lose on time this is the filler draw oh he won on time oh no in a dead draw position oh you can't see the position there you go you can you can see can you see the position there when i've got two let me readjust the board because when i've got two games up it gets very complicated right i'm just going to readjust this board one second so you can see it better oh that was tragic for richard and we've got one more round for a little break it's 11 rounds today uh, very strong tournament and we've lost one game to a pretty decent player not too shabby and um the leaders tournament scores are ikaru vidit grizchuk he's pretty good that chap where's david howe though i really want david howe to win one of these events even greg shahadi morozevich i don't think that can be morozevich because it's italian flag ruland nicely done ruland is up there three out of three and daniel naraditsky there's david howe david's on three out of three good to see good to see <coughs> So we had a we had a stumbling block like we say um in a game i'm just thinking what else i should have done in that game against grishchuk it was all very sensible chess and that ending 
the e4 move was was pretty pretty bad right okay just uh, everything else okay and i think i should have moved a bit quicker okay so we're in with another game uh now what haven't we played we haven't played c4 yet so we do this so we're playing a woman i am from india and we haven't played the english opening yet so we'll we're, we're give this a go we played e4 we played d4 we played c4 what what haven't we played yet what opening haven't we played yet island is it island oh it is island i wonder who i'm playing i probably know i know most of the irish players tisha ah oh, she's very she's a very good player i played tisha um in the bumrati tournament she's a really young talented player from ireland really 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 talented and could go a long way so not a player to be taken easily now maybe i should have just taken with a b pawn i don't know why i took that way because you don't really want your bishop on the square in this position i played this kind of thing before um and this is the way magnus sometimes plays this way but he puts his bishop on d3 which is a much better square than my bishop here this line should be should be uh just even so i'm going to get my bishop my knight this is the idea often you put the knight here which is considered a pretty decent square so now that she's played this i do have a hook and i can play this way which i'm quite tempted to do now if she plays i had this against vidic castles here f4 kind of thing i'm going to try this move out because it looks quite interesting to me i want to stop this move later on maybe play g5 but i'm not sure i should be closing the position down when i've got two bishops this bishop could be very nice it could be a very nice piece and the move i was more worried about there was was queen here but this is a very normal plan to start counterplay on this area of the board now if i go a4 her knight gains a good square but we're gonna play this anyway because i don't want a rook coming in and i'm gonna hope to get rid of that knight but I i'm not sure i should have done that really not not sure about that that idea of mine because this is a very nice square for the knight and the problem is after bishop e3 she can play b6 and if i take that knight she can take with the b pawn and that would be a very nice exchange for her a, a nice nice way to exchange exchange some pieces down um let's have another beer well another sip beer's going down slowly anyone else having a, a little a little beer today anyone else have a little okay where's she going okay she wants to come here and maybe in here interesting nice idea now is it time to do this or do we play h5 here here knight h4 okay i'm gonna go h4 because yeah, it's, it's a move right now i could go g5 as well but then h5 so i'm gonna go here and this is probably a very clever maneuver that my opponent's done she's very talented coming up with this maneuver this is a really one of these squares it's a really nice idea so she, she she's gonna go a long way this this player now i'm hoping that she can't break open the position and i get a chance to get rid of that knight with something like this i don't want to take that one because then she'll gain a very nice square on e5 So I'm hoping to do this, but again, she's playing very well. She's using those knights excellently. Okay, now that's a really weird square for the knight. Why did she go there when she could have gone to c5? I don't know. Is there something I'm missing? So I thought putting the knight on c5 made a lot more sense, right? Because I can never really go b4. It weakens my pawns too much. I'm not sure where that knight is heading. You should never move your knight somewhere where it doesn't have a clear, a clear route in. 
So she's blocking it all up. She's going for a very a blocking strategy and just trying to hold the position. Or maybe not. Maybe she's going to go this one. Um, so we've got to just look, keep an eye on that. So does that work if I take here? I'm not sure if this, she wants to play this move or not. It's quite a strange one. Strange position. I'm just trying to work this position out a bit. King F2 is my first thought call, but then after this, I want to go C5. Okay, I'm going to go this. I don't know if she wants to play D5 or not. I do have the two bishops. Does she want to open up the position? I don't know. I don't know if she does or not. This is the thing. Maybe she does, maybe she doesn't. So she decided not to. And I'm just going to try to stop her breaks. And now she's finding the right plan. I've kind of helped her found fine. Okay, we're gonna to have to go here. So I don't want that knight coming to that square. But now c4 is a bit weak, so there's an argument for her to come back. Ooh, look at this, really blocking down the position. <laughs> I do have one break later on. But it's really blocked, isn't it? Really, really blocked if I... Okay, uh, my time's low, I'm gonna have to move quick. Let's get my king over to the other end of the board. Because I wanna break on, the only way I'm gonna win, the oh fuck, I missed this move. Jesus, now I'm worse, just missed this one. Jesus, that was so sad. Bad, whatever you call it. She's playing very well, credit to her. My pawns are so bad. This is losing, I think. Oh dear, why have I done this? Why have I, what have I done, guys? What have I done? What have I done? Yeah, my pawns are so bad. She had me there. She had me. She played very good maneuvers there. Well, a swindle, maybe a bit of a swindle. Yeah, I mean, I'm clearly, I'm clearly worse, probably losing, right? So, uh, so I should have lost that one if she had played perfect chess. But when your time is low, it's not easy to do that, right? So, uh, we've got to ride our luck a little bit. Um, but I didn't play very well there, even from the opening. Um, I forgot on my own course and I know in this position when you got your bishop on g2 the rule is you take towards the center so this was this was already a little bit of a mistake and I know if you um, if you take away with the center because you, you saw that this extra tempo that I lost is, is not very good not great and taking I mean I should take the other way because if you take if you take the other way you, you have ideas of d4 which uh, is a useful move to have and f4 so taking i think my opponent just got nervous there by the way she played excellently she missed a little tactic and okay we're going to this position and this is probably even but she came up some very nice moves there. i don't know I, I don't think i should play this move my pawns are just long term too weak i think i need to probably castle give up on the idea of this and if she goes a4, just go rook b1. If she takes, I take with a pawn. This this a4 I don't like. Um, 
and I think she played very well now this is a very very clever idea and again I didn't meet it particularly well I probably should go knight d3 and just allow this knight to come here and just castle um, but I had I wanted to get my pawn to h5 because it did clamp down a kingside pawns maybe this position is okay knight b6 I, I think is, is, is the only bad move she maybe played um, but she, she played extremely well here and now I mean maybe I play f4 but she's always got the e5 square so if anything I do prefer her position even here because I'm lacking breaks I'm lacking play I don't know if I can ever go c5 but let's have a look so here again in the cold light of day it's so easy after a game to 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 see what you should play and I should just go c5 it's so easy afterwards you see the move immediately and I'm sure this move is just why didn't I play this move this is just like you see it straight away and you're like why did I think of this? It's sometimes weird when you're playing. She probably has to take, let's say she moves a rook, and now and now something like bishop c2, and this is prob this is a little bit better for me now because I've got my bishop into the game and her knight doesn't have any good squares. So she swap queens, we have the d file, we get something, let's put the bishop back here, controlling the knight. This is a little bit better for me. I'm not saying it's much, but we can play in the d file. Um, we can run the computer on it. I don't think the computer's going to be very impressed with uh, either of our play, but she did well. I mean, then, then she outplayed me later on. I don't know how old she is. She's only, uh, I'm guessing, 16. So, got a good future. And you can see here I, how much I'm struggling. Wow, did I miss a move there? What What's going free there? Oh, shit. No one saw this, right? You don't. You never have Queen A4 as an option. I didn't even think about that. I think I was still chatting to you about what opening I'm playing, and I didn't even see this one. I think no one saw his Queen here. Oh my words! We all missed that one. Did anyone else notice that? I think this is the point where you're like, you just play your opening moves and you're chatting about the last game, and no one saw this Queen A4. I can't believe this just wins a piece. Knight C6, Bishop takes C6 mad mad wow anyone see that one i certainly didn't see that one so uh okay poor and of course i mean look how much trouble i'm in around here so i was very lucky but when i got my little trick in it it you know i got this bishop c5 in and i think this is okay now because i mean I, the problem with this ending is bit opposite color bishop ending i mean i'm just this is horrible Opposite colour bishop ending can be a draw, but not when every single one of your pawns is on the same colour square as your opponent's bishop. He, she can just come over and mop them all up. So, yeah, so not a couple of mistakes there from me. I have played, it shows you, you can't relax in chess at all. You're relaxing the opening, playing your normal kind of moves, and you could have just won a piece. Unbelievable. When you don't, she's 15. Not bad for a 15 year old, eh? She's 15 years old. Wow, what a great player she's gonna be. She's gonna be a great player. Um, Silas saying, nice to see GMs playing English similarly as me. What, badly? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the scores on the doors and we can, uh, uh, let's just update this like I mentioned there's a break after round four the reason there's a break after uh, the reason there's a break after round four is is simply they, they check for computer cheats which is a good thing to do they just have a look at anyone who who's under suspicion come on howler I know that David Howe is just he's gonna win this event one one day one day one day he's going to win this again. Do you G chess these games at some point? Says past porn. You know what I should do, past porn. I, I should do a number of separate, quick YouTube videos where I just go over the games. That's a really good idea. I'm going to make a note of that. I go each game. I, I have a look at it on G chess. I might do that just to show you how you can use G chess. By the way, we got a very, we got a big um, update to G chess coming. Uh, shortly 
Um, take, I'm just going to make a note of this. Take each game from TT and look at it on G Chess. Um, spilled pool. Paul Shark asking, what is your best ever score? I, I'm not even sure what my best ever score is, to be honest. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure. Today will be my best ever score. But I have to play better than that last game. That was appalling. Any chance you'll be circling back to the Grandmaster Gambit's YouTube? Um, maybe, Jeff. I, I, I was trying to. It's just time, right? And, and the thing is, they take... Each of those free videos I do, it takes on, it takes like a day to make because you have to put a lot of work and editing into it, and which is fine, but they didn't get many views, you know, uh, and you know you have to do it. You have to do a mix. You have to okay. Let, let's what are we going to play here? Yeah, I'm going to play E5 actually. I'm just going to play this. I don't know this as well as some of the other moves. But we're going to get. You have to do a mix of doing work that actually pays and work. Now this is one line I, I do struggle with um this guy's a really strong grandmaster as well uh and this is one line i did put in the in our club players dynamite which is meant for club players but a lot of people did note that it's probably a rather dubious line which i do uh i do agree with them it, it, this line is a bit dubious if um white knows precisely what to do so I, i'm regretting my opening choice already <laughs> we need to update this line but it's it's very good for it's a very exciting get, way to play for club players and that's what that course is made for most of my courses are made for the thing nowadays the problem you get nowadays when you do a chessable course is that they this is a good move they have to really be like perfect because if they're not perfect what do i do here i forgot i've forgotten what i'm supposed to do even this position my memory is also bad which is if they're not perfect, your chessboard courses. I mean, they. I mean, what I mean by perfect, they have to be perfect according to the computer, even if they're practically. Practically, um, let me think. I need to just survive the opening. And what I mean by that, a lot of a lot of openings that people play, they're not going to be perfect according to the computer, right? A lot of openings are just not going to be perfect by any means. They're going to be. They're going to have. They're going to be risky. And the idea of the course we made was to make a risky course and people seem to forget this when they were reviewing it that it, it some of the lines were a little bit a little bit well i mean i would play them i'm playing them now but a little bit risky shall we say and i'm getting absolutely stuffed i've really i'm just losing a piece here this is really embarrassing i have to look this up this is one for g chess and um I'm learning e5. I've been learning it for a little bit, but I have I've been playing other openings recently. I'm really annoyed with this game. And one of the yeah, this one is just just completely losing. I'm just completely losing here. Um, and one of the problems when you're learning a new opening, you're going to get games where you just you just can't remember the right lines. Uh, and my opponent has played just just the perfect game here, and we have to resign. Eleven moves. And we can. I'm going to check that on G Chess now actually because I need to. I know I shouldn't have gone for that opening. He picked the scotch as the one line which I'm a little bit suspect about. So, but again, openings are important and I need to learn E5 a bit more. So this is G chess. I was disappointed to lose like that when you don't play a game. Um, but let's have a look what I should have done there. So uh, let's flip the board, look at it from the black side and make sure I don't have this again. So d4 the one move on a little bit okay we've got a couple of things here so this is the move which i did put so in my chessable course but it is very risky it has a lot of practical value but it doesn't always work it is a bit of a trappy line um i think a lot of i've had a lot of luck with this against other players when you're playing the elite players and i do need to give another line here as well as this queen h4 you're right because if they played a one line that my opponent played it, it's tricky let's just have a look so um queen h4 okay there's nothing in the courses you can see it is rare it wasn't even included in some of the work but on the encyclopedia so the club plays dynamite let's see what i recommend there 
and knight c3 okay let's have a look so now bishop b4 and bishop e2 this is easily the best approach by white and quite frankly one that we should rather our opponents didn't play that's why i didn't want to grab this pawn here and i was trying to play something else but is there any way we can survive this line now our deep analysis stockfish gives it not as bad as i thought it would so um we have to take here this is the only way to play it but i didn't want to play this because i was worried about the theory and now knight b5 i need so i haven't even looked at this line b takes okay i'm not going to play this line again though um uh, i want to play something a bit safer because i need to learn this line and try to find a way to survive the, the other line i was going to give here was actually this one queen to f6 so i just want to see what queen f6 this is maybe this is going to be my secondary suggestion against the scotch something quite simple to play and see we've done quite a lot of work on this move as well let's just see so this is this is the move I, i've been meaning to update the the course with and if you go well there's a number of moves here so knight takes c6 is the main move but now bishop c5 okay and this is tr means a novelty does it okay what else can he do i'm going to play this in future why don't i play it here knight b3 and then we give a check we come back okay i have to look at these lines and do we have any youtube videos as the game started like i say disappointing game that one i mean obviously losing like that just blundering in the opening is something that happens to us all but we've got to learn from it i wonder if there's any youtube videos in this okay eric rosen should we watch a bit of eric rosen with this move another thing you can do on this site g chess is you can put a position on the board this is a really cool thing you put a position on the board and this is our deep analysis stockfish so it does come up with the best line here no surprise there i hope the game doesn't start and you can find a youtube video on that position so i'm just going to see let's see what eric rosen says shall we let's have a little look i'm going to listen to this it's something I'm, I'm, i might consider playing myself as black depending on the situation but if we just see how many people fell into this on the chess yeah so we can see like if white doesn't play bishop e2 then uh, i guess knight b5 is also possible here but and there's a lot of ways white can go wrong. Queen to h4, the black oh. has, pressuring the e4 pawn. Though this move may seem like a bad one, since it brings the queen out early and refrains from developing another piece, it's actually a very strong line, and you need to be... Okay, so what, what I got from that is that Eric said it's, it's a playable line, quite an interesting line, but he didn't really know much about it either, because he was checking it on Lee Chess, so... <laughs> <laughs> so there you go okay well i'm going to look at that i'll, I'll do a video on that and I, I need to learn this one i'm not so annoyed i lost that one obviously it's not annoying to lose but i, I won't be playing that that variation again that's for sure that was that was rather rather bad uh okay well, let's have a look let's see if david howe's still playing and david i want to see he i don't know well we got to Karu. we can go to his game but has david finished mark hedman is up there Wow, Mark Mark is Mark's some okay. Mark is a great player as well. Good 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 friend of mine, Grandmaster from England. How many is he on? Am I on three? Maybe I'm the same same score as Mark now. It'd be quite funny to play Mark. Um and David Howell, did he win again? Just looking at the scores. Grishuk is on four. Howell is on four and a half. Okay. On five even. On five points and let's go back to hikaru let's have a look at how hikaru is doing now this to me is this winning is this pawn gonna queen bishop e4 and i think it's winning isn't it isn't this position winning for black i wish i knew my theory here I th or is it a draw is this a draw black one on time another thing we're going to bring to g oh no you can't see the board bloody hell simon it helps when you can see the board. I, I swap, swap scenes there, sorry. <laughs> okay, well, Hikaru won this position coming down the board. Um, but because his opponent timed out. But I'm wondering if this is a win or a draw. I think it's just a win because you just play king f2. And 
bishop to c8, right? That's the winning idea. So, for example, doesn't matter what white plays, does it? Because you can't get your king any nearer. And if you go like, I don't know, let's say king here. I go king f2. Actually, king there is terrible because I have to check. So let's say you go, you can't move your bishop on this diagonal, my pawn queen. So if you go here, here, bishop h3. I don't push the pawn because you give your bishop up for last pawn. You have to play something like this. Um, or try to play this. But whatever happens, I just go here in time. If your king was on f4, maybe it's a draw because you could go bishop f1. But this, this move seems to win, right? This seems to be the winning move. Because when you capture it, then we push on. Uh, basically so that yeah that 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 was winning for for hikaru there um okay so we're on three out of five um so we need yeah we need to get a couple of wins on the board um after that pathetic that was a rather pathetic loss but opening went bad i'm gonna have to look at that on g chess try to find the right way to play queen h4 a tricky line but if you're going to play tricky lines one of the things is you've got to know them very well and I don't know that Scotch line. That's one line I, I haven't memorized deeply. When I did this course at Chessable, I did it as a, a course which was gonna be a secret weapon course that I was gonna play. Thank you, Fry Daddy. But then obviously with COVID, I didn't really get a chance to play it over the board, a lot of the lines. And I started to uh, forget some of the lines. And I do that for every opening. And when you're trying to learn new opening, right, what, we haven't played B3 yet. You've got to practice, practice, practice. So that, that was, that's something I need to still do. So we're on three out of five. And that's a crafty move, stopping my f4. Uh, okay, I don't know what to do against that. I'm gonna go hippo star. That's quite an interesting little move, just stopping my main idea. So we're, we're, we're gonna get hippo, which is obviously okay for black, but it's, it's a position. Um, and well we can go for this at the right moment that's generally the way i play it. i normally just set my pieces up like this and the good thing about this opening for white is or black or anyone is i don't think it's a particularly great opening but 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 you keep all the pieces on and you keep it it's like a coiled spring black has a space advantage but you do get opportunities at some point and all the pieces remain on the board so it's actually quite an interesting opening because all the action will happen later on because all the pieces are on the board but of course black must be a little bit better because of the space advantage but i don't really mind that tony miles used to play this opening regularly um and have pretty good results so okay so wherever pawnee push i push the other one so it's not really a concern now i can play here uh, immediately but I'm going to play b4 because if he goes queenside castling it's a very useful move to have i'm just and i'm just waiting to react at the moment so if he castles this way his king is a bit exposed if he goes there i have an attack here and if he goes g4 i go h4 if he goes h4 i go g4 okay so he's playing here he's also trying to wait now e4 is, is probably a move i want to play but i can go knight here as well and then here, then I can take it and come in. So that is something I can do. Knight c3 is quite interesting. e4 captures. Knight takes maybe. I'd like to, I'd like, I'm going to play this because I want to capture an e4 with a piece and not a pawn. And the reason I want to do that is I want to keep my bishop open or, or on that side of the board. Someone asking in general, how do you play against a passive opening? Well, the hippo is a passive opening, but it's got a lot of potential. You've just got to avoid. Now, can I take there as well? Maybe it comes to the same thing, right? You just got to avoid doing anything stupid. I mean, just try to play moves that improve your position. It's a very simple answer. Um, just try to improve. Oh, we've got a Polish chess pats of Poland. Hello. Just try to play moves that improve your position. If you're playing, you know, don't you don't need to do anything drastic when you're playing against someone who plays very passively. Okay, now I quite like my position now because this is why I wanted to get the knight here. I didn't want to take with a pawn. 
Whoa, that is a wild, wild move from my opponent. And my first thought is to play this and try and just open it up over there. I feel I might play this one. It looks very interesting because if his pawn was back on b7, he'd be a lot safer. And now he's committed his king. We're just going to have a little go at attacking it. I know, I know he can win a pawn, but I, I'm not worried about that, especially here, because I thought I could just take this one. Right? This was, this was a move which I made sure he could not play. Because, or, or okay, I mean, is 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 this some very clever idea? I mean, I don't think so. A queen d2, or or can I castle? I'm going to castle. The reason I'm going to castle, I'm going to give the piece back. But I just want to have the initiative. So I'm going to give the piece back. I probably, the computer will not like that move. But chess is a practical game. And we saw in the last game I had, it was so horrible. Practically speaking, I didn't know what I was doing. I'm giving the piece back just because I want to have the attack. Um, and what I mean by that is I, I don't want to leave my king in the center and hold on to material. I'd rather have the attack. And now queen here was my first idea. And you can see this is probably a very good choice from me. Um, other moves, probably good, but this is just a very good practical choice, right? This is just very, very safe. You just get the king castled. Look how safe my king is. Whatever happens, I've got many attacking chances and I might be winning a piece back immediately here anyway. So this is definitely, I'm very happy with the choice I made. And now I think I take, if he takes the king, I've got queen d5 and this way we win a piece, but we, we make sure we do it with a safe king. And okay, this is this is resignable, resignable for my opponent here because my king safety. And what way are we gonna do this? Don't go rook a7. Um, take here, rookie one. Let's just go rookie one first. And now we take here. And we block it up over there so he doesn't have any chances of attacking our king. Rook c6, maybe an even better move. And now my priority is to get the queens off because just to take any, there's no counterplay here anyway, but try to take any counterplay out of the position. And the reason I thought he had to exchange queens is because this is pretty smelly for him. Let's just keep it simple. And this is my checkmate idea. Okay, well, I could take that one as well. Let's take everything, right? Just making sure I don't blunder. Don't let him confuse us and just take everything. Okay, thank you for the game. So, um, quite interesting. I mean, like, I think that was a perfect, like, hedgehog hippo in some way because we got this position and a lot of the moves he started playing weakened his position. Weakened his position. Um, especially b5 and then we've got an opportunity we went for this e4 move but i, I think again you, you i know there's okay he blundered of course he blundered but this a4 it, it seems very dangerous for him because look his king is over here we need to open up lines even if i lose a piece we just uh we just open up lines and this one's going to open up the rook so bishop b4 is clearly a blunder and now in this position i like what i did because it's simple other moves are much more complicated. For example, you take here, there's this check. This looks quite complicated to me. Takes, queen check, queen takes bishop. Uh, this is probably better for him. If we go queen d2, which was my secondary choice, I got a little bit concerned that he might better open up some lines. I'm probably, I must be winning here. But I think the best way to play it was, and again, when you're material up, just try to keep it initiative so important i think this castling is just a good move because he has to take here otherwise his piece down and this position is just horrendous for him let's just see what the computer says shall we let's have a quick run quick run on the computer um see if it approves it won't approve my opening but 
That's wow! I didn't like the game at all. Look at this and the computer, computer tar. Look at that. Even though, look, <laughs> even though it doesn't seem like I did anything wrong, really. Maybe something here, but let's have a look. That is quite a stingy accuracy level, considering that if you look at the actual game, it doesn't give many blunders. <laughs> now, okay, back to the game. I just hope the next one hasn't started. It it it's saying I should go knight b3. Now, what was wrong with this one? He should go bishop b6, but this is fine for me. I don't know why. It's not even that bad. So strange choice. It didn't like my a4. There was probably it wants me to grab a pawn instead, which it thinks is totally winning. But I like my a4. It's a very human move, especially in blitz. Especially in blitz, a very human move to play. So don't always listen to the computer. And this is just a blunder. And I bet it doesn't like my next one. It does. Castles is best. So I agree with it. And even here, look. Okay, so I play queen d5, and there's a better move. But queen d5 is plus six. Just keep the simplest moves. You don't need to always. You don't. Oh, hang on, Daniel Naroditsky. Oh my words. Okay, We're getting some easy games today, aren't we, people? And I was saying how much I I, I appreciate Daniel Dar Daniel Naroditsky. He's one of my favourite YouTubers, and basically people in general. He just seems like a really nice guy. He's really quick. Um, he's really quick. He's really quick. He's really good, um, and he's 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 basically just a class act, right? So I'm going to play my pet line in the French defense, which is called the madness attack, and it it is a little bit mad, right? Now I'm trying to remember what you do here. Do you do this? Let's do this. And this is a variation which is probably not very good for black if he knows his theory. But otherwise it could be a little bit of fun, right? But I think he knows his theory. Oh shit. So Daniel knows his theory. He's a class act. But he get a very fun position. So let's let's do it. He's zoned in. Daniel's always zoned in. And the problem here is that after this one, if he knows his theory, queen takes g4 is actually just very good for white. So I'm taking a little bit of a risk playing this line. Um, because I know Daniel's a class act and he'll probably just find that move immediately, but it's a fun position, we, you know, Daniel, we, it's a crazy position, this one. Ah, he's found it. <laughs> and you should never play openings which you know are dodgy. My openings against e4 are a little bit dodgy at the moment. I was hoping I'd get a, a Dutch in. This is a good move. This is a good move. Okay, so we're going to take this. So the one good thing about my position is I have extra material. The very bad thing about my position is that my king is very unhappy with the way i've behaved in 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 this game extremely unhappy with me and do i grab <laughs> i mean how many <laughs> this is this is really like this really kind of i've got to give this line up i'm getting really stung with some of my lines here and i'm quite scared here my moves look very forced I'm luckily, oh my words, are we just getting, oh, I think we're just losing straight away because of this. And this again might just be a forced loss line that I've gone into. Typical, hey? He knows his stuff well, doesn't he? I didn't expect him to know his line. So I'm gambling a little bit and I don't, I don't see how I can survive here against, you know, Gambling a little bit, but I'm going to be a rook down. Any compensation? Nah. He's played it perfectly, right? Knight here. Oh, this is ugly to play. We can fight on. We got a lot. We got some pawns. It's not completely over because now I've got this one, right? 
Maybe I'm okay. Maybe I'm actually okay. I don't know. Probably not. Back we come. I get very pessimistic sometimes. I play like you, you play like someone so good and you're like, oh yeah, just just lose, 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 lose. Now I want to get the pieces out. Uh, don't like my pieces here. This, I want to get them out. Is it equal to material? It's bizarrely equal to material, but my king is just okay. Am I being too pessimistic? Is is this okay for me? Is this position okay for me? Do we just push this and pray? Is this position actually okay for me? Am I just am I just like literally just panicking for no reason? Come on, <laughs> we're just pushing him. Is this okay for me? And I'm literally just freaking out for no reason whatsoever. I even have queen c5. What a mental game. I can't evaluate this. No one can evaluate this position. This is unevaluable. Don't know if that's a word, but I'm going to try to queen a pawn. That's it's like, you know. I know when I put when I looked at this line previously, I thought black is maybe okay I have to take here I think but I could be losing which I keep saying every move um okay well I, I have no choice there I've just got to push do, do, do. yeah move the king this blunder see that's the thing you play these guys they're so sharp and I've just blundered there and that is a really big blunder right probably it's probably doing well I was probably doing well I can't calculate as quickly as Daniel I bet he's not having a beer I need to get another beer after this that's my excuse and losing that pawn was just sad Losing that pawn is really, really sad. I mean, there's, pawn, there's pawns you want to lose and there's pawns you don't want to lose. And losing that pawn is really sad. Let's have a look at that one on the on on the computer because, um, again, maybe I was doing all right. I'm going to get another beer after that one. Oh. Uh, I mean, the opening, you play these openings, which I should realise that the top players know what they're doing. And... There were some points where I may have been okay. Look, so this is all from the opening. I know this is like, I'm going into this opening knowing I'm in a bit of trouble, but like, okay, this is the best move. I know this is the best move as well. And he plays all the recommendations. Then suddenly I managed to defend okay. And I'm back in the game at this point, but it's so complicated. I thought I was losing, but I missed this move. I missed knight d7, knight d7 was very much a punt and around here you can see any result any results kind of possible but my plan of my plan of just pushing the pawn seemed okay the computer doesn't like it maybe i shouldn't do that what should i do then instead queen e7 play a sensible just play a sensible move instead um and let's just go see if i had any chances later on because this pawn this pawn seemed to Give me some chances right and now i played another mistake i should go queen d6 no but then he takes and takes that pawn so how do you play this so hard to play this with no time on your clock and the computer thinks i'm okay if i go queen b4 that's a hard move to find right trying to come in there wow and this one allows this move which i missed obviously and after this it's, it's just winning because He's cleaning his pawn. So some opening uh, disasters. Opening disasters. Opening disasters there. Oh well. Um, if you go, I mean, the way to probably play this opening, this is quite an interesting position. But there's, I don't know, there's, 
you have to really go for this bishop here move. I don't think there's anything else already. The computer really likes white's position. So this was a little pet line that I used to play um, before before computers got really strong. And then when computers got really strong, it kind of like it kind of like you know they t they find holes in your repertoire and you have to move on. So I haven't played that line in a competitive game. But I thought, okay, what's the chances that Daniel Naroditsky will know this very old variation? Of course he knows it. <laughs> of course he knows it. Of course he knows it very well. Anyway, he's a nice guy, so, and he's a good player. So how many rounds do we have? We, we, we've had um, seven rounds and not on a particularly impressive score so far. Uh, this is an interesting game. Duboff, okay, Duboff drew with David Howe. Um, fair enough both very good players and the tournament score at the moment so what am I on what did I say I was on how, how many points out of seven we should uh, should try to work out what kind of score I want right anyway that, that's the leader so Grischuk I played some good players today but Grischuk is at the top on six and a half come on guys how many how many how many rounds have I had or maybe it will tell me here so I've got four out of seven. So we've got four rounds to the left. So we need to get to eight points, yeah? Eight points, right? Eight points. So we need four out of four now. Let's do it. So what opening haven't I played? I haven't played the birds yet. Let's go for the birds. We'll try and play a different opening every game. With with the black pieces, though, I really need to I really need to play some better openings with black, right? I'm not okay, we're not gonna play I've played two very risky lines against good players, and it just shows you tricky lines which you can maybe play sometimes but against the top players you can't play a load of crap you just can't so i'm going to go to the birds i quite like i mean i like the birds and this this variation is um quite similar to a line that the legendary gel fan played against me and i came up with this idea against him which tries to stop that knight from moving because we we can cause a little bit of trouble and now this idea, get a little bit of play on, on the queen side, was the way uh, I was planning to, to play against Gelfand. And we make some exchanges and I'm hoping that uh, I have some nice squares for my pieces, like these two squares for my knight, uh, this pawn I'm hoping is a little bit weak and we can come around and, and eventually try to win this pawn. Yeah, let's play the black line next, right? So we need four out of four to make it a good title Tuesday. Four out of four is what we need. Anyone? I've always said, I always say this, oh, we need to win our last five games, four games. I don't think I've ever done it. Does anyone have any faith in the chat? Anyone? Well, let's win this game first, then, then you can maybe have a little bit more faith. Anyone at all? No? You could do it. Thank you, Ken. I knew I could rely on you, sir. Okay. I love my b-shop have I ever got eight no it says a banana chest no well thank you for your ongoing support you bastards okay now let's just try to win that one do we come out with a queen I'm not worried about anything I think we bring the queen out well I'm really gonna concentrate now and I'm going to prove all the naysayers wrong we're gonna get four out of four I've got to sort my black openings out in a blaze of glory in a blaze of glory we're gonna start okay I was wondering about this now if I go I'm gonna I was wondering about this move this move was kind of like worrying me but um, here night here Am I worried about the knight coming in there? Probably. I don't know, this is really confusing me. Knight takes knight here. Okay, he's gonna take there, takes. I'm gonna play this one, but it, this is, that was a good move from my opponent. He played a very clever move there. I think I should have played in the last position h3 to stop stop all of this stop all of this nonsense that he's doing I say nonsense it's a good plan because uh, if his knight can't come in to e3 then my position is great okay well he, he didn't go for that I'm very surprised now I'm gonna definitely stop that 
I mean, he was worried about me winning a pawn, which I would have played. But the thing is, when you're going to when you're going to play a plan, and he came up with this very interesting plan, you've got to really follow it through. You can't play a plan and then change your mind. I think that's that's a big mistake in chess. And now that I've stopped his knight coming in, I'm generally quite happy with my position. I'm not saying it's amazing, but I'm generally quite happy. Now, if I take here, he will. So here, here, knight, queen here. Let's do that. Or one of these two squares, my queen. Well, I'm going to attack the knight. And now I'm hoping I can get away with this because his bishop is on pre if he plays knight takes d3. And I've got one more move where I feel I should be. Well, actually, queen a3 is a better move. Queen a3, because then I can eject his very annoying knight with b4 or bishop take or bishop to b4 next move. So I'm gonna play here because that knight is strong. Let's get rid of it. Get rid of his strong pieces. Something to b4, next move. Probably the pawn, right? Du, 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 du. Is Daniel Narodicki um is Daniel Narodicci streaming today? I expect he was. At least, well, it's nice to have a fun game. And, and I have to, I have to admit, like I've, I've done a lot of commentary work with various people over the years, and most of the strong grandmasters. When I say strong, like the Daniel Narodicci is incredibly strong, one of the best blitz players in the world. Most of them are extremely nice. They're extremely nice people, but that's not always the case. It's not always the case. Um, but I can tell you, Daniel Narodicki, it is, it is the case. Okay, so I don't mess this up. It's looking very promising. Um, now we could even go here. Oh, there's a lot of tempting moves to play. I'm going to play this because his king could be weak later on. In the position. Now best way of doing this big time advantage do we do we I mean this is very this should be very very promising but I'm very good at um, okay let's just get this one in first of all and is this Queen gonna really annoy me down there I'll take another one My pawns are juicy. And here they come. Here they come. Here they bloody well come. Look at those guys. Look at those guys. How nice they are. I don't even want to move that because he'll take it. I'm just going to play this. And this bishop is not great. Let's give that bishop a little bit of life. This bishop is not fantastic take that keep it simple and bring this bishop around because he can't move really here as far as I can see this bishop wants to come around the angles could have been finishing this off a lot quicker but okay now we come in Still causing some annoyances here. Oh no, don't say he's got a perpetual. My god. Oh my words. Don't say he's got a perpetual. Oof. You had me worried there can't believe that can't believe that can't believe he nearly had a perpetual I've got a lot of Queens let's get another one for the just for the just for the giggles oh dear Whew. oh you suddenly you suddenly snuck around the back there I'm like hello hello don't be doing that on me okay I'm gonna get another beer I think this is probably a wise wise probably my best move of the day 
So stay with me. Get a, um, I'll get another beer. Let's put let's put it on a game. Um, you can have it. Oh no, have we got enough time for beer? It's always enough time for beer, isn't there? Uh, we need to get four out of four. Um, yeah, it's enough time. I'll be back. Sweet alibi, but what's that song? Sweet, do do do. Okay, Whew. did a bit of a running job there. That's my exercise for the day. My exercise for the day is is running to the fridge, Whew. grabbing a beer, running up the stairs, and drinking the beer. Yes, I've done well today. I've done well. Who needs a gym when you can run to the fridge and grab a beer? Okay, oh, hey. uh, <laughs> let's have a look at the uh, tournament. So I, I, can't, I don't know what I'm on now. So we had eight rounds and I need to get three out of three. A couple of you had some faith that this was doable. Um, well, I won the last one, even though I don't know, he probably didn't have a draw at the end, but I'm not, not totally convinced. And um, we need to get three out of three. Now I think we're gonna have two blacks. So I've got to try, I've got to try play a little bit of a, uh, a little, some better openings that's a bloody sure um jess fox saying i'm gonna do some rock climbing later today oh nice one man um that's a very good idea very good idea rock climbing is yeah I, I, funnily enough that was something i did when i was a lot younger i weigh way too much to do it now and I'm out of shape but rock climbing is rock, rock, rock climbing is a cool thing to do yeah great so anyway, having a look at the scores. So where are you, David Howe? Is David Howe still in with a shout? It looks like he has not done it again. Big names up there, uh, and we're on five. So we need to we need to get a bit of a run at the end here. Grischuk at the top, obviously on tie break because he's played me. Three games to go. There's a little break now after this round because they're checking for cheats, and um, that's that's fine. And I, I think we've got the football to look forward to after this for anyone who watches football. Spain versus Italy and it's England playing tomorrow so a good couple of days of football so who's going to win it this time um I mean you can, it's really hard to bet against Hikaru Hikaru is so good um I would hope I want to see Grizzchuk win it after he beat me right that'd be a nice one to do um Spain versus Italy I think that's what I said isn't it Spain versus Italy today it's going to be a great football match, um, definitely. Um, and just three games to go now. So we can see, try to find my name. I'll leave it on the board for now. If we scroll down quite a lot. We play some strong players today. It's nice to play some of the top players. We haven't got a result against them yet. Had some terrible openings. The only opening I had which was good was against... Uh, uh, Ruland is still doing well. He's on five. Is Ruland who did a, a course on the Dutch for us? Is on five and a half, and still, and, and also is my friend Ali Mortazali. Impressive. And I am on six, right? No, five. I'm on five points. I can't be on six. So I need to. I need to get above Ali. I need to jump ahead of him. Bit of rivalry there. So I'm going to have to get three. A three out of three is the only good score no draws free out free we're gonna have to take risks if we get a drawn position we're gonna have to we're gonna have to take some risks and try to win and let's see 
We're going down. I'm scrolling. Oh, we could play Greg Shahadi. That could be quite fun. Scrolling. Where's my name? I hope I'm on five, unless I've miscalculated. Am I on five? Where's my name? There we are. We're on five. And there'll be a lot of grandmasters around my score. Lower down. It's a very strong tournament. And the thing is, with the thing is with uh, with uh, Title Tuesday, a lot of the non-grandmaster players are blitz specialists, and they're really good. And maybe they would be grandmasters if they played more tournaments, right? If they played lots of these first Saturday ones, etc. They just haven't maybe had the opportunity to play loads. <laughs> right. I haven't even finished my first beer. I didn't realise I had any left. So you can just sit here and watch me drink beer now until we, the ne until we see the next game starts. So someone suggested playing the black line against E4. It might be time to wheel out my new opening. Is it time? I think it might be time. I think it might be time to wheel out my new opening, which is something I vented. I don't know if I invented it, but it's something we came up with the other day on a stream. If you missed the stream, you're missing out. It was a great stream. We came up with it. Is it time, Ken? Ken saying it's time. It's the weasel poop opening. Yes, you did hear that correctly. It's the weasel poop variation. Are we going to wheel out the weasel poop? Um, I think it's time. I think it's time. Clearly, the weasel poop is coming. <laughs> Thank you for subscribing, Treacle Toes. Treacle, hello, Treacle. And uh, it's time for the weasel poop. Let's bring out the weasel poop. I think we're going to have to. We need three out of three. What do you do when you need three out of three? You roll out the weasel poop. Has anyone heard about the weasel poop? Surely two beers required to play that opening. At least two, I would say. Always double check. Well, I think we can do it on one. We're going to make it work on one. Come on, the weasel poop. The weasel poop is coming. Yeah, Jess, Jess Fox did an amazing um, song for me, which I play at the start of nearly every Twitch stream. Jess Fox, very talented chap in many, many different things. And um, Jess did our, the weasel poop song. But we've now created a weasel poop variation, Jess. So that's it, the weasel poop. Ron Weasley, I've been called Ron Weasley before, see with the ginger hair, it's quite a normal thing to call me. You look like a lion. Um, <laughs> well, there are worse things to look like, aren't there? Um, weasel behind you, Simon. Where? Okay, we're in and the weasel poop is ready to roll. If E4 is played, only if E4 is played, we're doing the weasel poop. If E4 comes, we're doing the weasel poop. Um, we're going to have to stick to the Dutch. We do want to get three out of three. I'm very confident in Dutch. Remember, if we get eight out of 11, three out of three, that is a bloody good score. So we are going, we're going for, and you did want a Dutch, Rothif, oh wow. You did want a Dutch and you will get a Dutch, my friend. You will get a Dutch. We're going to Dutch him up. Duff him up. Dutch him up. So here we go. Here we go. Checkmate on H2 incoming. Checkmate. It's a bit of a depressing name that my opponent's got, isn't it? Chronic unhappiness. God, I'm already feeling sorry for him. Anyone else feeling sorry for him? Not enough. To, not enough to resign. I, I would. I would like to. I would like to add. Okay, we're going to go for, this is a very risky move, because you still allow that knight to pop its head in there. C6 is a safe move. This is the risky variation, and I had this against Adams. This is a normal way to defend, and you try and come over here. So actually, if, if you're watching Ken, and you, and you, you want to you're trying to, you know, you're trying to learn the, the English course that I did, this is actually a pretty good way to play against the Dutch Ken. The way my opponent's playing this. Um, sounds like Gormali's handle. <laughs> Frenchie, you know Gormali too well. Gormali loves being a bit sad, really. 
He's a, he's a really nice chap called Manny. Danny called Manny, if anyone knows him. He's a very nice chap. He really is. He has his mood swings, but don't we all? Okay, so... Whoa, that was a good catch there. Jesus. I nearly ruined the keyboard there. Did you did you see that? That was that was ninja skills there. Ninja skills. Okay, so takes takes knight e3 takes takes should be an evenish position. Do we have anything better? Uh feels like knight takes take okay, takes knight e3 takes 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 I think we have to do this. I think we have to do this. Did my opponent was threatening to take and capture there. Maybe maybe I had something better, but this now bishop takes, queen takes, c takes. Bit of pressure down here. So I'm gonna try after this move, play the intermezzo, which is a move in the middle of a combination um, here. Unless I can see anything better. Bishop takes here. Can my knight trip somewhere else? Can it go on a little magic roundabout somewhere? That was a good pro. Anyone mention? You all too young to remember the magic roundabout? Oh god, some of the names in that. Puff the magic dragon. <laughs> Let's not go there, Simon. You can get yourself in trouble. Um, no, it's knight c3 even better. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this. I think it's an even position. The reason I'm playing this, I I don't want to allow my opponent. Now his knight takes even even better. No, it's, I don't want to allow my opponent. Okay, so this is even. So it's not quite what I wanted. It's trying to bring this this geezer in. So is it time to take, bring the queen up, or defend? Hmm. He's playing some, okay, I think we will have to give up on our ideas of checkmate here and, ju and just play chess in what should be an even position. I say it's even because, uh, I mean, it looks all right for me, I think, you know. Omatard, yeah, that's it. Zebedee, I had a friend called Zebedee. And he was bloody nuts. Um, yeah, I, I puff the magic. I mean, it was well, it was good. Do you guys in America get that the magic roundabout? I'll tell you what, Jess, you would love the magic roundabout. I'm sure. <laughs> Jess, you would love it. You would love it. Okay, I'm I'm playing chess, aren't I? I think I am. So what am I doing? Okay, think. Uh, let's just. My opponent is playing very well, so we have to do a little bit of rearranging. Queen here and I'm happy. I feel I prefer my position, actually, because I've managed to keep the knight out. And at some point, I'm probably going to bring this knight into the game, so it, it seems quite nice. Now, bishop takes is correct because... Uh, we're happy to try and get this one in. And if he plays bishop takes, knight takes, my knight will just take there. So it's, it's starting to get a little bit tricky. Now, this is an interesting tactic I was trying to work out. Because if takes, the knight comes in. Or take, I might have to move the queen. But then knight here, very interesting tactic. Uh, okay, I'm to calculate. Takes knight here and I'm suddenly in a bit of trouble so I like my position but this is this is a very good play from my phone rook here and defend on the seventh that's a bit passive take the knight I'm not sure why I like that but then I've got okay we'll move shit I've got to move fuck oh man I have to play this oh my words what happened Concentrate. So we're going to get so we'll get a bit random here, as you can obviously guess. Oh yeah, fuck 
this, aren't they? Something, something serious. Excuse my French. Not a good time to. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. Oof. Never in doubt. Never in doubt. I bet chronic unhappiness is going to be very happy about that. Um, he, he played very well there, actually. He played very, very well. I mean, my position, I was very confident around here, wasn't I? I thought, okay, this is great because after I get my bishop to e6, I need one more move, queen d7. And then I'm threatening to capture, and, and my pieces come to life. But um, you were lucky he was slow. There's no such thing as luck. You make your own luck. You make your own luck. I don't think the final position is worse than me, to be honest. Uh, by that stage, I think I'm okay. But I think he did miss something. So um, here, maybe I should take with a knight, right? Why didn't I take with a knight? This is this is the way I should play it. Just play this. I was a bit too confident. This is a much better move. Because I threaten his queen. He's got to get rid of my, my knight, yeah? And now just simply take here. And that stops this annoying idea. And this is the way to be a little bit better. Because his queen may look annoying, but actually, I think I'm very safe here. If he goes e4, then I can just drop this back. And if everything gets exchanged, his knight's very bad now. It's got very bad knight. So two out of two to go. We could be heading for a famous eight out of 11, which would be one of the best scores I could. Can we do it? Can we just get two more? We're riding We're riding the lightning a little bit. Got to get a Metallica in there now and again. Um, we're riding the lightning. We're riding our luck a little bit. Can, can, we, get, can we get two out of two? Should we have a little look on the computer at that? But I don't, wanna, I don't want the next game to start and suddenly I've lost loads of time because it's going to get quite intense now. And the next game is probably going to start any any moment. Tournament scores, two games to go. Eight out of nine, there's, there, there was now four. Grischuk has lost a game. Where is the howler? Daniel Naroditsky making his move. Where is the howler? Is the howler there? Anyone see the howler? I can't see the howler. I cannot see the howler. Um and also i want to see if i'm above okay we're in with a game we've got a tough game and we've got black is it time to wheel out the weasel poop we've got black again that means if we win this we'll get white in the last game we need two out of two is it weasel poop time if he goes e4 are we going to do the weasel poop this new exciting unique deadly opening i think we're doing the weasel poop and what's this guy do doing playing chess the football's on He's from Italy. The football's on. I think he's gone off to watch the football. I'll take a win. No, he'll be back and he'll move quick. I, I did this the other day. The weasel poop's coming. The weasel poop is coming. Or if we're lucky, we will get another Dutch. We'll get another Dutch if we're lucky. Oh no, it's going to have to be the weasel poop. Here it comes, the weasel poop. And the weasel poop is on the board. For a famous two out of two. And now we have to do the weasel poop gambit. Do we? We're going to go for the delayed weasel poop. B5 is the weasel poop gambit. This is the delayed weasel poop variation. This is, this is a variation of the weasel poop where you just slowly gather, your, gather yourself. And now, and now we do the weasel poop push. Okay, let's do this. And I suppose we need to take our pawn back, right? It looks like a position. A5, bishop a6 looks like a plan. I want to wait and see where he moves that knight. So if he, okay, so knight here, bishop h6, are we scared? We don't really get scared, so let's do it. We have to bring this one out. I'm, I'm a little bit scared about him trying to checkmate me. What is that? He's going backwards. The man is going... Is, is he really that greedy? Does he really want to grab that one? Is that really, really the way to play? Am I worried about a measly little pawn? 
I'm not that worried about a measly little pawn, am I? I'm not worried about a pawn. You can't have the damn pawn. Have the damn pawn. Do whatever you want, man. He took it quickly. Am I worried about a pawn? Now we need to open up the position, right? Now that he's grabbed that one. Let's force that, let's, let's force that one away. I'm going to have to now prove compensation for the weasel poop gambited pawn. This is the weasel poop double gambit variation or sing no single gambit sorry my 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 error so how do we now claim compensation he's a couple of moves away from getting a safe c file compensation don't need to panic let's just go for c file compensation okay and what i mean by that we just have to play on the C file. Okay. Now, now, now. This one's kind of what he wants. This one, Knight C3. I, I mean, I'm hoping I've got enough compensation here, but I'm not a hundred percent. My queen could get trapped, but we've got to take some risks. Oh fuck, did I trap my queen? Oh Jesus. Hmm. Don't know if I've got enough compensation here, do I? <laughs> do I, don't I? Um. Okay, this knight is crap. Let's bring it around. We do have the open file, and I'm trying to get this knight into a couple of decent squares. So I think I, I think I do have quite okay compensation here now. Probably just about enough there. As you say, the C file complete domination of that file. He's creaking at the seams. The D pawn is chronically weak I'd say the knight is ready to hoof its way into the weakened structure is the f pawn now ready to show its power okay he stopped my knight that is not very nice of him he's containing all of my play at this moment in time I want this square if I can get it but he's not going to let me get it he plays another good move and he's now trying to consolidate. He's defending extremely well against all my advances so far. He wants to come in here as well. So we're going backwards and he's coming for this pawn as well. But then I can take here just trying to keep some opportunities available. Have to take that one, no choice at all. How do we complicate this position? This one, my knight is bad, let's get that out of the way. Yeah. Possibly another bad square for my pieces. Gonna need a bit, of, gonna need, I don't know. I mean, this is still a little bit spicy here. I wanna go d4, but he had knight e6 check. Still some compensation here, I think. Still some compensation. Still causing some trouble to his position.
Ah, oh. damn it! Ah, oh, well played, sir. Ah, oh, so close at the end. I thought I was having him there at the end. Again, we failed. Oh no, you weasel! That's the first time I've lost with a weasel poop as well. It looked like it was doing all right at the end there, you know. It looked like it was going okay. Um, let's have a look. I mean, it wasn't a great game, I don't think, but it was. It had some interesting moments. It was a good fighting game. Well, we got right back into it after he really kept our extra pawn at bay. And again, I wouldn't worry about the stats on this one because it was quite interesting. There was a moment. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the graph, though, the graph is... I'm struggling, 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 but then I missed one opportunity, one opportunity. So the weasel poop didn't really impress. My openings with black have been absolutely disastrous today. Um, and this was one moment here where I missed an opportunity and the opportunity, I could just take this one. I played, why did I not take this one? Why did I play that? What a lunatic. I can just take this one okay and the reason we can take that is because this is what i want to do anyway and just bring the king and i think we're probably winning here right because this pawn is just too strong so that was the opportunity but we were probably in trouble for most of the game so it's not it's we can't really blame too much the weasel poop it's a very interesting opening but I, I really bottled it here and I should have gone for the accelerated weasel poop. That would have been the only way. Um, Neil Parker saying the weasel poop looks a little bit, um, a little bit, a little bit dodgy. Well, thank you for reminding me, Rehifo Wow, you disappointed us. I'm not a performing monkey. This is life. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And in the words of Lemmy, it's all the same to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I mean, it didn't go great, the opening, and I'm not sure if I could sack this pawn the way I did. Maybe I had to just keep on to this pawn. This all seems all right. Excellent move. He played an excellent move there. So I think I should probably just not sack the pawn, right? Um, it is a bit bad. Hello, Andy. Your timing is impeccable. After a very depressing loss. We should probably put the bishop on d7. I mean, on the plus side, if we win the next game, we get a very respectable seven points. So we've got to, we've got to go for that. Put the bishop somewhere. I was hoping I'd get enough tempo to cause some problems here. But I didn't really manage to cause enough problems, did I? He defended very well. And I was worried about my queen being trapped here. And was it was it trapped? This is the only move I could think of. It, oh no, we're in with a game, and I'm okay. Let's try to get, let's try to get up to seven. Seven is a good score. What opening move have we not played yet? We haven't played g4, so it's time for g4. And we're going to finish off. We're going for seven points. Seven points would be a good score. And seven out of eleven is very respectable. So we're playing. The most dangerous opening we can think of, which is the La Grob. Le Grob. And we're going to try and create just a little bit of havoc on the board in this one. Let's try to create a little bit of madness. I don't mind giving up a pawn. And we're going to now get that pawn back, but didn't want to allow him to swap queens off because. That wasn't really part of our, our plan. Uh, maybe knight e7, we can... I was thinking we could go c5, but he's got check. Can we make that work? Now, this move is also very possible, but I do now get a square, which he can try and force me back from. Okay, so he's getting ready to castle. Seems like quite a wacky position. We've got a wacky position. That's something it might be the only thing we get here <laughs> now c5 oh let's keep going look if you're going to do the grob you've got to you've got to just keep going you've got to keep going he's trying to get rid of my knights and get the queens off which is a little bit 
That's why I was going to move my knight back. Changed my mind at the last. We might have to get the queens off now. Annoying, because we wanted a bit of action with the queens on, but not the end of the world yet. Come on, Grob. Do your business. Yeah, he's keeping the queens on. Good on him. Now, let's go here. I said that very slowly because I have my doubts. And here, am I walking into a horrible pin? Most probably. Can I do anything about that? Rook here. Otherwise, this one's coming. My pieces are not getting in, are they? Bishop here, I was hoping, but Rook d8, and I can't find a solution to that. e3. Let's go here. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. <laughs> rook here, bishop here. Sorry. h6, bishop here, rook here, bishop here. Okay, let's try this. Let's try it. So the idea is to sacrifice my queen. Rook d8 takes. But I had to put the pawn here to stop his king coming here. So after the variation... Okay, he didn't go for it, which is understandable because it looked a little bit scary. And he's just playing very sensible moves. It's always annoying when the opponent does that, plays normal good, normal good moves. And this piece is my problem piece, the bishop on f1. Can we get that one in the game somehow? Uh, I'm going to have to move my queen over here as well. And he's coming for me. He's coming for this square. We're on the back foot a little bit. Do, 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 do. I suppose my one hope the Grob has done is mighty rush up the board. And you've got to hope that later on there'll be some possibility available against his king with my pawns so this is the this is the long long-term hope here but i do have a slight question to ask my king at this moment in time where does my where does my king go i need to give it a little bit of protection and, and i wanted to castle queenside but i realized he has some nasty moves there okay we'll go here you never know he might miss this one He's not going to miss that one. He and you know, this rook coming in is very annoying. Very annoying. Right, I know this doesn't look good, but my position's got to a stage where I've got to try something out. And in we go. <laughs> what has my king done? What has my king done? Leaving for the football, thank you. Uh, I think we'll all be leaving for the football very shortly. Um, it's going to be a very interesting match. And of course, the winner will play England. Maybe. If, if England win. So, okay. So this position is horrendous, I think. But I'm hanging on. I'm a pawn up now. And can I get any joy? This one wins, doesn't it? Ah. Oh gonna play it he's played it the grob didn't work disappointing end but at least we can all go and watch the football now so anyway reasonably interesting title tuesday that loss before was painful and that one wasn't that one a bit of a crumble going on there a little bit of a crumble so we're going to give daniel narodicsky a little raid or a big raid so go and say hello to daniel i'm going to go and watch the football as always and i hope you all have a good night say hello to daniel with the raid when we go over there always nice to say hello um and thank you for watching um cheers